We just got our brand new remaster in the Resident Evil series with RE4, and I feel like every remaster that Capcom touches turns to gold for some reason. Regardless, we have covered the previous three titles on the channel, so go and check them out if you need to catch up on the story before this one. Let's break down the story. We open up with some hooded figures surrounding a young woman that is looking very culty. They begin to use an axe on her and presumably behead her. We get some narration from our favorite Raccoon Police Department rookie, Leon Kennedy. He talks about the events that took place during RE2 and how the cop in him died that day. He was asked shortly after the events to join a top secret government program. Forced is probably the better word. They put him through extensive training that Leon says almost killed him. This took place over a six year period. Leon is now in a vehicle looking at a picture of a young woman. We see that he is being driven around by two Spanish police officers. They ask why he is there. He responds that he is looking for somebody. The officer mentions that the person he is looking for must be very important since his own boss told him to help Leon in every way that they could. He says that a lot of people have gone missing around this area and it has been like that for a while now. They reach the area before one of the police officers needs to take a leak. He hears a sound in the woods to his side and goes to investigate. Now, I understand that this very brave man is a police officer, but as somebody that has now done explained videos on a lot of horror games over the past few months, allow me to give you some advice. If you hear a noise in the middle of the night, in the woods, don't follow the noise. Go, just go back to your car, lock the doors and get the hell out of there, alright? Don't become a cult sacrifice, okay? The other cop mentions how it's been a while since he went and should probably go check on him. Instead of doing his own job, he asks Leon to go do it for him, so he does. We can see a large variety of strange things as we go further down the track, wooden symbols and even animal corpses left out to rot. Leon comes across an old house that has seen better days. Some further investigation inside the house reveals that some similar wooden charms that we saw outside. This charm has judgment is nigh written on it in Spanish. Leon heads into the kitchen and we come across this lovely gentleman. He begins mumbling chants under his breath and walks towards the fire. Leon asks about the missing police officer and finds his badge covered in blood on the floor. The man attacks Leon from behind, but Leon puts all those midnight self-defense courses to good use. We head down into the basement and find many more wooden charms and dead bodies, including the police officer from before. We can also hear over the radio that his partner that was waiting in the car is in the process of being taken himself. Leon goes upstairs and finds a map of the nearby area, along with pictures of a woman that he is looking for. He uses a communication device to reach the US government using their codename of Roost, while Leon's codename is Condor1. We find out that the young woman that Leon is looking for is none other than the president's daughter, codenamed Baby Eagle. He says that she is likely in the village, and asks for further information on the lake. Some loud footsteps begin to come from downstairs and these unfriendly hosts force Leon to make a very quick exit. We continue on the path and come across a village. The locals are burning the police officer at the pyre. Leon begins looking around town but is spotted. This causes the entire town to come after Leon and he begins committing all kinds of war crimes. Even this chainsaw guy gets in on the action. In the middle of this gigantic frenzy, the bells on the church begin to toll. The locals stop attacking Leon and begin moving towards the church in some kind of trance, chanting we will serve in Spanish. Leon is understandably confused as we get a panning shot of the cooked police officer. Roost calls Leon, telling him to look out for a windmill near the lake as that is a possible spot used to hold Baby Eagle. When we reach the building near the lake, we can hear big amounts of banging coming from inside. Leon finds a photograph on the table of a young boy with his grandfather. More on this later. We find a hidden hatch into a basement area and we come across a man tied up. He asks Leon for a smoke before a giant man approaches from behind. This dude throws Leon like he's a goddamn paperweight and it knocks him out. He grabs a needle in his pocket, showing a small parasite in the tube before injecting it into Leon's neck. We see glimpses of a man in a hood saying all kinds of creepy stuff before Leon wakes up. We can see that Leon is now chained up with the man from before. He introduces himself as Luis Serra. 
Leon notices that the joint holding them to the roof is wobbly and begins to put pressure on it, while Luis jokes with Leon saying that he chose the wrong place to vacation but does eventually mention if he is looking for a missing woman. Leon begins questioning Luis and he says that he heard chatter about moving a woman and not much later notice some men dragging somebody to the old church. A man comes in with an axe and attempts to kill Luis, but Leon manages to save him with one of the most badass ways to kill a dude I think I have ever seen. Luis unlocks himself and takes off, leaving Leon with the key but gives himself enough time to leave. Leon notifies Roost about the information regarding the president's daughter and tells the government to run a background check on Luis Serra. He heads out towards the old church, but finds a big house on the way. Inside there, there are some interesting village records that I think are worth mentioning. We learn from the first document that these are created by the village's bookkeeper, as the elder entrusted the village to him. He felt the need to keep a record. It speaks of a young boy that lived by the lake with his grandfather, the same two that we saw in the picture from earlier. It says that the boy's mother died in childbirth and the grandfather was left to raise him. The boy is described as very bright and spirited. However, the grandfather had fallen ill and continues to worsen every day. The boy worries about him and there are rumours of madness seeping through the village. The grandfather pulls aside the bookkeeper and said if anything happens you know what to do, which ended with the cabin being set on fire as everybody stood around it, watching it burn to the ground. The boy watched on without saying a word even as dawn broke he didn't move a muscle and when the next day came, he was gone. The second document speaks about a group of black robed people descending upon the town from the castle, raising a flag with a spider-like insignia on it. They preached about salvation and forgiveness and injected the locals with something that they claim will cure them of their madness. The final document tells of strange weather, that the wheat withers while the cows grow thin. The signs of famine are setting in at the village, they lack the means to tend the fields, but Lord Sadler's orders are absolute. 30 people have starved to death, while 5 cows will be slaughtered. 6 people have been chosen for Lord Sadler, 8 more the following month, and then 4 more, and finally 11 more. Even 2 outsiders got lost and wandered into the village, they were then taken to the altar and used for the ritual. Nearby we can find a painting of the robed man from Leon's dream but not before the giant man from earlier shows up and begins to give Leon another beatdown. He looks into his eyes and mentions how Leon's blood has accepted the gift, before getting shot in the head a few times by a woman in a red dress. I wonder who that could be. The big man leaves, and Leon is left to ponder about this gift that was mentioned. Roost get back to Leon about the background check on Lewis Sarah. They tell him that he used to be a researcher for Umbrella Corporations, which causes Leon to mention how he should have just left him in the bag to rot. We make our way to the cliff edge and get a better view of the lake. We can find these gentlemen in a boat, dropping a body overboard before taking off. Some of the local fish life make quick work of the offering. Now, I have a question. What is the best idea that you can come up with when you see a hundred foot creature that belongs in the Jurassic period in your lake? Well, head out there in a small rusty boat that can't even keep the motor going. Of course. The creature takes Leon on a ride, and we have no other choice than to use the infinite amount of spears at our disposal to kill this bad boy. One giant fish later, and Leon begins to cough out blood and ultimately faints. We get another vision of a hooded figure, again, as he calls the person the sacrificial lamb, saying that they will receive their most sacred body. Once the day breaks, they will also join their covenant forever cutting to show us the person being spoken to is Leon. So he is essentially having weird psychic dreams from this hooded figure. We get a call from Roost, and they mention that Leon has been radio silent for three hours, snoozing on the boat. But Leon continues his journey to rescue Baby Eagle. We reach the church, and Leon calls out for Ashley Graham, revealing the name of the president's daughter. We do manage to find her in a side door as she attempts to attack Leon, asking him to let her go. She runs away and Leon has to try and convince her that he isn't a threat. Ashley notices a group of villagers approaching the church as a vision of the hooded figure comes into focus, telling them to pursue them, that the lost lambs are escaping and to deliver onto them salvation. This also indirectly shows us that Ashley has been infected with the parasites since she is also having the visions like Leon. They manage to escape the church and Leon notifies Roost that he has successfully got Baby Eagle and is told to meet at the evacuation zone. 
Back at the village, we can find a journal belonging to an older man. It turns out that this is the grandfather from the previous files. He speaks about his daughter, whom he lost during childbirth, saying that his grandson is a very curious child, smart and observant beyond his years. If he wasn't stuck in this village, he might even become a scholar. He continues to talk about an incident with a wolf, saying that he shot clean through the wolf's head but it lunged at him afterwards. He got back to the cabin but his wound was swollen and discoloured, choosing to not tell his grandson as he did not want to worry him. His next entry mentions how his body moves on its own now and that he can hear voices inside his head. Questioning his own sanity, he fears dying and leaving his grandson alone. Still fleeing the villagers, Leon and Ashley stumble across a house, when Luis opens the door, urging them inside. Leon is not very receptive to seeing Luis since he now knows about his past with Umbrella, but Luis offers to help Leon deal with the villagers. They don't go down without a good fight though, and are left with no option but to retreat. Leon closes a gate and buys them more time to rest as Ashley begins coughing up blood. Luis asks her if this is the first time that she's coughed up blood. She says that it is, and Leon asks for an explanation. He says that the coughing and the blood are caused by something called a plaga. He says that she has the same thing inside of her that the villagers have inside of them. The same thing that makes them as crazy as they are. Stating that the symptoms are only the beginning, but tells Ashley to consider herself lucky since at this early stage the parasite or plaga is actually able to be removed with a surgical procedure before revealing a large scar on his chest, showing that Luis was once infected by the same parasite but was able to have it removed via surgery. He says that he has a plan before leaving into the woods telling Leon that he will contact him later. We now see Luis as he reaches the woman in the red dress. Turns out that it's Ada from RE2. She asks Luis if he has the amber in his possession, which he doesn't currently have, saying that he managed to hide it right before he got caught, which is why he is still alive. Ada says that the deal that they had was to get Lewis out of the village, but only when he delivered the amber. So in other words, no amber, no protection. He says that he will go and get it now, and that there is something else that he needs to retrieve as well. Leon gets a call from Roost and says that the chopper is unable to actually approach for evacuation due to the weather. Not long afterwards, Leon and Ashley get ambushed by a large gentleman from earlier. He is literally Leon's kryptonite at this stage, I swear. He says that their souls require cleansing and bend steel with his hands. Dude's just showing off at this point. They run away before Ashley gets stuck in literally the worst place you could imagine. Talk about cutting it close. The tall guy spear tackles Leon and tells Leon to abandon his body to the will of his god. The bullets really don't do anything to this dude, so Leon decides that maybe explosives would be better. However, this just reveals his true form and I must say that this is a thing of freaking nightmares. Leon gets to work and we manage to get the best of him. He dies yelling for Lord Sadler. His name was Mendez by the way. Ashley breaks a window, allowing Leon to escape the burning barn. Leon and Ashley reach the castle, as the drawbridge begins to close, stopping them from being able to leave. Luis gives Leon a call and tells him that he has some medicine that will slow down the progress of the plaga, and to meet him in the castle courtyard. We get to the main castle before being greeted by this individual. Now, at first glance, I am sure that you thought this was an 80 year old grandmother, however, you might be surprised to know that this is actually a dude named Ramon. He tells Leon to hand Ashley over to him, which Leon obviously declines. He says that the girl must be turned as they would be the key to the United States and eventually the entire world would overflow with his grace. This is the will of his master, Lord Sadler. He then orders Leon's death and the retrieval of Ashley. We get through this mess and head further down into the castle dungeons, finding all sorts of goodies down there, including this chained up behemoth. We get ourselves back upstairs and head outside. Ashley begins having head pain and collapses. She grabs Leon's knife and tells him to stop worrying about her and instead worry about himself, calling him a little lamb. Thankfully, Ashley regains control of her body just in time, but flees out of fear of hurting Leon again. Leon heads back inside in hopes of finding an alternative route behind the locked gates. Inside one of the rooms, we finally get our reunion between Leon and Ada. 
Leon doesn't seem surprised or startled by Ada being alive, which she finds interesting. They have a short fight before Leon asks Ada who she is working for this time around. She says that she doesn't work in tell, then recommends Leon to leave the girl. Leave the place now and when they next meet it might be under better circumstances. He refuses and Ada leaves as Leon mentions that Ada was the last person that he thought he would run into in Spain. We get back outside and are greeted by this giant creature that reminds me of the brew marks in the Gears of War series. It takes a cannon to the face and we proceed on our way. Leon manages to track down Ashley as she's crying on a bench. She tells Leon to stay back in case she hurts him again. She goes on to say how scared she is, that when she stabbed Leon she wasn't feeling herself anymore. Leon reveals to Ashley that he has also been infected, stating that it's fine to be afraid but you can't hide from it. You have to keep pushing forward before reiterating that they can get out of this, but next time just give him a heads up before she decides to stab him again. Leon gets another call from Luis and tells him that he screwed up and to meet him at the ballroom beyond the courtyard. We do a cool three-headed puzzle to unlock the doors and some more cult members approach. They manage to trap Leon and Ashley has to flee. Leon goes full Rambo and quickly dispatches of the cult members while Ashley locks herself in a room and states that she won't run this time. We now see Ashley's POV as she needs to collect some items to help rescue Leon. When she gets there, Ashley throws Leon the key to his cell before being kidnapped by some other cult members. Leon attempts to shoot the creature but it has little to no effect. We see Ada in the courtyard as she speaks to a man over the radio. The man asks about the amber and Ada says that she is still working on it, but states that her little helper is creating quite a commotion, that little helper being Leon. The man tells her that she can keep the mutt as long as he gets what he wants. She notices that the creature is taking Ashley into a different part of the castle and calls Leon, informing him to go to the throne room if he wants to get Ashley back. Leon gets his way out of there and does find Ashley. She yells out to Leon and that it's a trap before he is held down by the creature. The cult members carry a bowl filled with like a black goo substance towards Ashley and force her to drink it. Ramon bid Leon farewell and the creature throws him into a hole in the floor. Leon manages to barely survive the fall by holding onto a chain but has now found himself in a large underground cave area. We do however manage to find the creature from before and it is goddamn terrifying. Leon barely escapes and heads into the elevator before getting some more visions. The hooded man calls him pathetic, saying that his suffering can end, just like their newest daughter, who has joined them in communion and is now one of their own flesh. He says that the disciples will show her the path and orders them to deliver salvation to these vagrant children. We see a face reflect back at us in a knife before Leon awakes again. We see Luis, and he has the medicine needed to slow down the Plaga's progress. Leon takes it, and Luis reminds him that it only buys him time, and that it will wear off soon. Luis is very optimistic about the idea of rescuing Ashley, and Leon questions why Luis is so willing to help. He tells Leon not to be so suspicious, and that he just wants to help out. We find a log of the foreman of the mines beneath the castle. The first entry is dated October 11th. He speaks about the fact that today is the worst day of his life. It's his daughter's fifth birthday and he's stuck down in this dump. If not for the pay, nobody would work out in the middle of nowhere. The second entry is dated October 19th, mentions how the residents of the castle keep telling them to take care during the excavation, but many of the workers have collapsed after inhaling dust, stating that something strange is going on here at the castle and that the castle residents aren't telling them about it. Too many secrets. He says that he himself has started coughing and that he should get some sleep. One week later, he says that something is terribly wrong with him. He has thrown up blood three times today and is so weak that he can barely move. He regrets coming out here and mentions that he is a terrible father, saying that his daughter deserved better. The next entry is much shorter, simply saying, since morning, head don't work. Why? More blood threw up, many insects crawling, I hear a voice. The final entry states that it's a fine day to work, and digging brings him so much joy, that he is full of happiness, that he offers it all to him, everything for Lord Sadler. Allowing us to get some insight into how this Plaga infection completely turns a person into a servant, Leon mentions to Luis how he struggles to put faith in a person that once worked for Umbrella. 
Luis reminds Leon that Umbrella is done for and not to worry about them anymore, that he wishes to make amends for what he did at Umbrella. Leon and Luis end up having a fight with these two giant creatures again and manage to escape on a minecart in pure action movie style. Unfortunately, not long after this, Luis is stabbed from behind, revealing the person from the knife's reflection, Major Krauser. This guy is the person that taught Leon hand-to-hand -hand combat and knife training during his six years of training after RE2. He takes the amber from Luisa's jacket, and Leon pieces together that Major Krauser was the one that abducted the president's daughter from the US and then shipped her to Spain. They have this really crazy knife fight, and I struggle to even keep up with most of it, but Leon is kicked down below. Luis saves Leon and forces Krauser to retreat. Luis, however, is severely injured and states how this is a devastating loss to the ladies of the world. He gives Leon a key to his laboratory, which has the equipment available to remove the plaga from Leon and Ashley. Leon helps Luis light his cigarette as Luis mentions that he led a shitty life, but asks Leon if people can change before dying. It's worth mentioning that we find out later throughout numerous files that Luis was actually the grandson from the stories earlier. It was his grandfather that died to the wolf, and he went missing shortly after his grandfather's death. Leon gets out of the mines, and we find Ramon and Krauser with Ashley. He tells Krauser to take Ashley to Sadler and to remind him not to forget the loyalty of his faithful servant, Ramon. Leon approaches, and Ramon begins to give him the typical bad guy speech, but surprisingly, Leon really doesn't care and cuts the speech short with a few rounds to the chest. Unfortunately, Ramon is literally built different and turns into this abomination. A dead Ramon later, Leon sees a speedboat that Krauser is using to transport Ashley. Leon finds another speedboat before Ada shows herself once again, revealing that she has the keys to the boat. We can see that Leon really doesn't hold Ada in high regard. He mentions that after the Raccoon City incident, as we saw in RE2, everything's changed including him. Ada laughs at this, telling him that he hasn't changed at all, but he just thinks he has. Leon responds if Ada has changed at all, or is she just trying to use him again? She asks him what he thinks and proceeds to turn into Batman and gets the hell out of there. After some searching through the abandoned facilities and killing some very disgusting creations, Leon manages to find Ashley and injects her with the medicine to slow down the plaga's process. She seems to have come right, but Leon on the other hand is having some serious issues as his medicine is beginning to wear off. Ashley awakes and she thanks Leon for giving her the medicine. Leon tells her about Luis's death and they continue towards the lab to cure their parasite problem. Ashley says to Leon that they clearly make a great team together and even suggests the idea that she could become a secret agent like Leon, showing clear signs that she probably has a crush on our long-haired devil. They reach the hillside facility and we can see a large piece of amber that contains small parasites within. Sadler appears and mentions that this is their holy body, the divine providence, Las Plagas. The hood comes off and we see some parasite action going on there at the back of his head. He begins to control Leon and Ashley's bodies as he tries to make Ashley shoot Leon. She manages to resist enough to kill the two cult members behind him before the gun runs out of bullets. He continues to tell Ashley to submit her body and release herself from fear and leaves with her before Leon regains control of his body once again. We find Krauser again and Leon asks him why he betrayed his nation and squad members. Krauser mentions a mission in a jungle that nearly resulted in his own death and Leon's. He says that he had a revelation that day. Nothing was more important than pure unadulterated power saying that the cult Los Illuminados has given him that power. He starts to grow bone arms and mutates into this. I have to say it gets grosser the more I see it. He says to Leon that it's time to finish their training and Leon mentions that it's time for the teacher to be taught. A long fight ensues and Leon kills Krauser with a blade to the heart. He dies saying that he trained him well. Not super vital to the story, but we get this helicopter guy that comes out with Leon for a bit during this area, and his name is Mike. He is part of the US government trying to help Leon complete his mission. He's a complete badass, and I just want to state that I was very upset when he died, more than I should have been for a character that got like three minutes of screen time. Leon finds Ashley inside the altar room that we saw at the beginning of the game. 
As he reaches her, he is forced to stop by Sadler. He tells Leon that he wants to share his gift with every single person possible, that they are all connected together by the holy body. He asks Leon why he refuses serenity when he just needs to accept the gift as Ashley has. Leon at this stage is getting pretty damn direct as Sadler begins the process of turning Leon completely. Ada lights this dude up and buys Leon enough time to rescue Ashley and get the hell out of there. As Leon takes Ashley to the lab, he is having a whole bunch of hallucinations, but manages to push through regardless. He gets Ashley on the chair and begins the procedure, using the lasers to eradicate the parasite in Ashley. This is a very painful procedure, but it does get the job done. Leon falls unconscious afterwards, but awakes as Ashley has used the same procedure on him, and they are now both parasite free. We can find a picture on the table of the lab, showing the European Laboratory 6 dream team of Umbrella. One of these people is Luis. This is the same team responsible for creating Nemesis from RE3, and is also the same team that Chris Redfield went to investigate in RE2. Leon and Ashley make their way outside and can see that Ada has been strung up on a tower. Leon rescues her, but I, I'm still trying to figure out the thought process for causing an unconscious person to fall at least 40 feet onto metal was somehow a good idea. In real life, that is either one death or 100 broken bones or whatever. Sadler returns and gives Leon the tentacle treatment. Ada turns back into Batman and saves Leon before lighting the dude up again. Sadler is pretty pissed off about Leon getting rid of his parasite and begins to turn into, once again, pure nightmare fuel. Thankfully, a rocket launcher in the right spot gives Leon the opportunity to kill Sadler once and for all before being hit at mark speed. Again, in real life, this is almost always death. If not, you would probably wish that you were. Ada takes the amber and offers Leon a ride home, which he refuses, as he and Ashley decide to take a jet ski instead thanks to the key that Ada gives him before taking off. They manage to escape the exploding facility like every other great Resident Evil game, and Ashley asks Leon if she could put in a word with her father about putting Leon on her personal guard. He tells her that she doesn't need him, and that she's proven that she can handle herself. We get a post credit scene of Ada speaking to her boss. She asks him what he plans to do with the Amber, and it's revealed that her boss is actually Wesker, the same gentleman that we dealt with in Resident Evil 1. He says that there is this new dawn breaking. Ada asks, just how many casualties are we talking about with this new plan? Wesker says billions, and Ada decides to threaten the pilot to change course immediately. And that is the complete story of Resident Evil 4. Thank you all for watching all this way, and if you did, write Nightmare Fuel in the comments down below so we can see. If you enjoyed the video or found it informative, as always, hit the like button down below, and remember to subscribe for more Story Explained content in the very near future. Until next time, peace.